Ah, winter. The time of year of insulated barn boots, keeping your hands warm under a horse's mane, shavings covered gloves, and when the heat of COVID face masks actually felt good, as opposed to under the sun and horse shows. And fuzzy winter coats. Hi, we're six year Niagara County 4-H veterans, Michelle and Schroeder and Marty. We're from Western New York, so these winter conditions aren't unusual. In fact, it was just snowing two weeks ago. Crazy, Marty. So for a few weeks now, it's been all 70s and 80s, so somebody got a nice clip job. Today, I'll show you how that was done. When clipping, you want to start off with a nice, clean horse. The only way to truly get this job done is by bathing, and sometimes scrubbing soap multiple times, too. Just like dirt will dull your clippers and give you a bad looking clipping job, a wet horse is super hard to clip too. So you wanna make sure you drive your horse off really well after a bath before clipping them. When you're squeegeeing them, make sure you don't wipe any soap off. If you do, you need to rinse it back off because soap will... If you find that you're squeegeeing, salad patches the soap off. Please rinse your horse back off. The soap will make them itchy and they'll already be itchy from clipping fur and it will also be har hard to clip through. For the purpose of this video, to make it shorter or more useful, I may be throwing things down or sitting things up. If you watch this video, please be aware of a few things. Number one, I do things my own way, especially because I'm a miniature horse person. I'm a rare minority that always does a full body clip, not just a fancy like bridal path and whiskers trim or a hunter or trace clip. I also want you to be aware that it's okay to ask for help. There's still a few areas that I have my trainer help me touch up on so I don't end up shaving a horse's mane off or go in the show ring looking like a mess. And please don't push your horse or yourself more. If a horse is new to this, introduce clipping slowly and bathing slowly. And if you need to take a break for a few hours or even wait till the next day, that's okay too. Now let's begin. In most cases when clipping, you always want to go against the rejection of the fur, and you want to keep the clippers level against the horse's body. Here's a video I took of the first swipe of Marty, my silver dapple, who's always so fun to clip, because his winter coat and his actual coat are nothing alike. I'll play it for you a few times so you get the gist of it. Oh my gosh, I love all the dapples! Then you want to keep doing this over the whole body. Have a plan in mind. Don't just go all willy-nilly over the entire body. Some people like to start on the neck. I normally start on the barrel just out of habit because that's where I always start to see what color Marty is. I'd advise staying away from the sensitive areas at first. If you're brand new to clipping, clipping right against the mane or forelock that you could shave off might not be the best idea. Like I said, there's no set in stone way to do it. As to the clickers, I use Wall's KM2 speeds. It's just personal choice. I really like these and I know a few other people who have them, so that's why we bought them. Your clippers might be stubborn sometimes, and there's a few reasons why. As you can see in this video, I sprayed them with something. This, my friends, is called Cool Lube. This spray cools and lubricates your clippers. It's important to be constantly feeling the blade to make sure they're too hot. If they're too hot, turn them off and spray them with Cool Lube. Cool Lube is just one brand, it's probably what I'm going to refer to as is because it's the brand I've always used. I've also seen it called Freeze Blade and Blade Ice. Another clear liquid you should have on hand is Blade Wash. Blade Wash, again, is a technical brand, but anything along the lines of Blade Cleaner works. I'd advise having a separate Blade Wash from Cool Lube, even though some cooling and lubricant agents might claim to also be cleaners. You won't need to clean the blades as much as you need to cool lube them. And you only need a little bit. You then want to brush them off afterwards with the blade brush or a toothbrush it probably came with. And word of advice, if you're clipping with a little kid around who insists that the blades need to be brushed every time they're cool lubed, just let them do it. It'll keep them out of your hair while the blades are cooling. Depending on how warm the blades are and how dirty they are both on the blade and inside, They'll take up to a couple of minutes to completely cool. Now a few areas I'd like to focus on. First off the bridle path. This is the shaved area between the mane and the face where the halter or bridle would lay. 
to do this, either push the halter way back or put it around the neck. As a general rule of thumb, the bridal path needs to be at least as long as the ear pushed back, but preferably longer. The mane should be cut to line them kind of with the horse's throat, because this makes the horse's neck look longer, which is a good trait a judge may look for. If you use the pushing the halter back trick, this is also kind of nice because it gives you a reference point to stop at. In the same motion that you're kind of sh sh shaving the bridle path down, you may also want to start making the short pieces of the forelock disappear. I know some people who keep a clipped bridle path on their horse year-round to make working them over the winter easier. You can do this. I personally don't, but whatever floats your boat is great to me. When you're doing the bridle path, just be careful because if you mess up, the mane or your horse's forelock will either be gone. This is kind of close to ears, so green horses to clipping may start to get jumpy or sensitive due to the sound or vibration, so always be on alert. Again, it's amazing if you take the time to ask somebody else for help. Don't worry, someday you'll get better at clipping. If you aren't body clipping and want to even it out to match the rest of the body a little bit, take the clipper sideways on the edge of the bridle path where the mane would grow if it was never clipped. Another area where the putting the halter around the horse's neck trick may work is when you're shaving around the horse's head and face. You want to just shave the face. Get all the long furs out. This is a good area that if you miss a fur, you'll definitely be able to tell. As you can see, I put the forelock in a hair tie so I didn't shave it off too. When shaving the face, be extremely careful along the eyes. This is a bad situation if you have a spooky horse when you're near the eyes. When you're shaving the face, be extremely careful about the heat of the razors, especially when you're putting them right on the muzzle to shave the muzzle fur and whiskers. A good idea is feel them against your lip. If you think it's hot, then your horse thinks it's even hotter as they have more nerves than us. Make sure to get the cheeks in under the jaw. Another tip for tying a horse, especially a horse that's relaxing and falling asleep, to keep the halter from going into your eye, clip the leader up to the side of it. To clip the ears, if your horse lets you, you clip the outside as usual. To get the long furs from the inside, you just lightly pinch it and clip. Again, going against the direction of the fur, so for the most part, that's going to be going up. This horse is very used to me touching his ears, but this can be hard on a younger, unexperienced horse. And is definitely something you may want to ask for help in if you need somebody to twitch the horse or hold the horse still. We talked about the front end, now let's talk about the hind end. You want to move the tail out of the way and get all the fur. Don't actually clip the like skin part of the buttocks though. Also around the tail, you'll want to leave a triangle of longer fur if your body clips entirely. This is a little toe trick to make your horses look like they have a higher tail set. To do this, I usually shave a big triangle, way bigger than I need when I'm initially body clipping. Then I wait to go back to get the triangle down to shape and size. After you have the triangle, the size and shape you want, you want to go over the longer pieces of the fur in the same direction as the fur to even it out. So it's not as obvious as the horse has a random triangle patch of fur. This is especially important in horses like Marty, whose coats get entirely sun bleached so it's a different color. The other time you would want to clip in the same direction as the fur is when a horse has already partially shaved and was clipped months ago, and you want to finish the clip job. Such was the case this year with Indy, who we shaved like the top half of due to some skin issues, but when it was time to fully body clip him, we didn't want to completely do it again. So you can see that I'm using the follow the direction of the fur technique in this clip. Another instance when directions are confusing is when you're clipping the flank. When you're doing this, just kind of go in every which direction. Shaving directly up and down sometimes helps too. As the flank hairs are very curvy and diagonal, 
and go literally everywhere. If you can't follow the fur exactly, it's okay. Now that we've covered the majority of the body, let's talk about the legs. For the top of them, up to the hock and knee, and the front of the lower leg, you just clip normally. When clipping right after bathing, make sure this area is completely dry, because unlike the top line of the horse, it can be slow sometimes. Don't clip directly on the chestnut, but you don't have to worry too much about avoiding it. Don't overthink it, and if it starts to peel by your clipping, Pull it off anyway. The lower legs you'll want to be careful as this is when some horses like to move. Be sure to clip all the feathering from the fetlock off and don't try to shave the outer layer of the hoof wall off while you're doing this. Again, not something you have to overthink. Sometimes with like the feathering around the fetlock, you have to go upside down in a few different directions, especially if the horse is trying to put up the feet as if it's being picked. When you're clipping the legs, also make sure that the chest and between the two front legs and in the insides of the two back gastrons are clipped too. If need be and there's clipper lines, you get rid of them by going over them in a few different directions. As long as you're going in even strokes and holding the clippers kind of flat against a horse, this really shouldn't be an issue you have to worry about too much. And we're done! I hope that this has helped you to better understand clipping. As I said, clipping can be a long process. It can take me up to two hours, and it's hard to learn at first. But as long as you stick with it, you'll be golden, and you'll be pleased with the results. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.